When you travel, a lot of times you'll be doing a bunch of sightseeing, maybe eat some good food in the area, but you might want to end your trip off on a high note. And that's how it is for my wife and I. So when we travel around Japan, we usually go to some sightseeing and tourist spots. We will check out some izakayas and eateries for some good local food. And we'll stay at a ryokan resort, hopefully with an onsen. So we were traveling around Fukuoka, which is the prefecture on Kyushu Island that I first lived in when I moved to Japan. And staying true to our style, we wanted to find a nice ryokan resort, hopefully with an onsen, to spend our last night in. The problem is that while Fukuoka has a lot of great things, there's not a whole lot of options when it comes to nicer ryokan resorts with an onsen. Now we were up north in Fukuoka, which is right at the tip of Kyushu Island, and just over the strait, across the water over there, was Yamaguchi Prefecture. Now Yamaguchi Prefecture is not really visited often by foreign tourists because a lot of times tourists will go to Tokyo and visit the areas around there or Osaka and visit the areas around there. Maybe they'll go down south as far as Hiroshima, but not really to Yamaguchi. But we found out that deep in the mountains of Yamaguchi Prefecture was an onsen resort area that dates back several hundred years, was a destination for daimyo, and they just went through a rebranding and renovated some of the area. So that's how we decided to end our trip on a high note. But first, if we're gonna go to Yamaguchi Prefecture, we have to have one of the best sushi experiences in Japan. Karato Ichiba, or Karato Fish Market. It's in the Shimoseki area of Yamaguchi, and a ton of booths line the floors of this warehouse-like space to sell sushi and all kinds of different types of seafood. Each booth will put out freshly made pieces, and you can just roam the floor, Go to a booth of your choice, pick and choose the nigiri that you want and they'll wrap it up for you. And then you can go to another booth and pick out something that they have there that you want. It's basically a sushi heaven. Once you have your custom made tray, you can just go outside and grab a seat and enjoy your sushi while looking out at the amazing view of the strait. Now it's time to head to the onsen area. If you're coming from the Pacific Ocean side, the Nagato Yumoto onsen area is deep in the mountains. We're talking one car train and an unmanned train station deep. Nagato Yumoto onsen is located along a river and has a long history. But that being said, the area was a bit outdated. So in the spring of 2020, they began to make some changes and now the onsen area is really nice to walk around. Right along the river, they renovated their public onsen, onto, into this simple yet modern looking building. You can grab some Japanese sweets at a cafe like this one and just go down to the river and sit down in these little areas that they built. It's really nice and relaxing. One of the bigger additions in 2020 was this place we were staying, Hoshino Resorts Kai Nagato. My wife and I really liked the Hoshino Resort's Kai Line, so this was a perfect fit for us to end our trip. The line really dives into local culture. For Nagato, the rooms are beautiful and simple. They're decorated with colorful paper crafts and art pieces that come from the area. Even the keys are artistic. The resort Ryokan is modeled after traditional tea houses that were built to host feudal lords in the 17th century. So everything feels like a modern version of what was long ago. It's really well designed. There's a Japanese calligraphy activity that you can do because making inkstones has been a regional craft for 800 years, so they teach it to you here. There's both indoor and outdoor onsens. The indoor one felt like it had more minerals in the water for some reason, but of course it does feel nice to be sitting outside. The water was really silky and made my skin feel really smooth. And then when you're done with your bath, there's bottles of free self-serve Nihonshu, or Japanese sake, from the area. And then it was time for the Kaiseki dinner. We got the upgraded dinner and the presentation was as beautiful as you'd expect from a Kai resort, incorporating more local paper crafts. 
There's a lot of citrus like yuzukichi that was featured throughout the meal because it's native to Yamaguchi Prefecture. And it added a light refreshing taste to everything and it was perfect for summer. Our meal was centered around wagyu beef. They call the dish kawarayaki and it's based on kawara soba, which is a soba dish from the Shimonoseki area of Yamaguchi where you cook some soba noodles on top of a heated roof tile. And they gave a variety of toppings to eat your beef with, like garlic powder, sea salt, sancho, which is a Japanese pepper like Sichuan pepper, and a few others. We capped off the night with a stroll around the river watching some fireflies. The next morning, we took another dip in the onsen and had a Japanese breakfast that featured more regional ingredients and local styles of cooking. And with that, we successfully ended our trip on a high note. As always, there's more in the description below. Thank you for joining and happy travels.